Hello there, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to do my Alan Clark series. I'm coming back to it. It's it's ready to go again. Uh, so I'll be talking about Elephant and the Firm, uh, which are his final two films. I'm going to do another two films from Elder earlier part of his career, probably next week or the week after, depending on when, when I get around to it. I've seen them, I just have to prep them really. Uh, but this is Elephant and the Firm. Now, uh, both of these movies were made like the late 80s, this was just, uh, and after the firm Clark developed cancer and died, so the firm was his final statement. I don't think it was made with knowledge of he was dying or anything, I think it was just made as a film and then unfortunately he died after that. Uh, but, it w but it was not like it meant to be a final film, it was just a, another film in our career, basically. Um, so, even though these are the final films, they don't really feel like final films, they just feel like a director who's hit a peak. So I'm going to start with Elephant. Elephant takes place in Northern Ireland, and it's, it was meant to be a film about the troubled Northern Ireland. But then, as the process of the film, making the film, and as developing the film went on, um, Clark says he thought that any prescribed thing was be would be inadequate to actually look at what the problem was, which was people killing each other based on beliefs. And instead of going into that with lots of dialogue and anything, he made an almost silent film, which is basically about a bunch of people going around and assassinating each other. That's all it is. It's 35 minutes, and it's like, I'd say about 20 people getting killed over that 35 minutes. So you follow the killer in a variety of locations, and the killer goes into a variety of like warehouses, shops, various public places, kills someone, walks away. That's it, that's a whole film. Um, but the thing that's great about it is it's just about the the idea is to present what's actually going on, which is this is not like the, it's not that the police shooting each other, it's not that the army shooting each other. These are just citizens who hate each other so much that they'll kill each other. So you, you've seen people at work and killed. You see people like who work in who manage like a fish and chip shop or who work in a factory, and because they're from a different religion than the other folk, they get killed. You know, that's it. That's all it is. So it's a great summing up of the problems in Northern Ireland. It's a great summing up of the problems in any sectarian area, any area where you're defined by your looks, your religion, your gender, anything that makes you other from the from someone who has a problem with you being different from them, and who are willing to uh, take the next step and to eliminate you. You know that's all it's about. It's, there's nothing else said. And by doing this, and actually, by making it normalising almost, because you're watching it, you're getting, yeah, you, after the first couple of killings, which are brutal, you kind of get used to the killings pretty quick. It's part of, I mean, it's still horrific, but it's part of the, you know, the world you're in. That's what the world is. You keep going through this world, kill, 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 kill. That's it. On to the next one, kill. And then you move on, you don't know who it's side they're on, because you can be seeing it from both sides, or the Catholic Protestants, you can be seeing it from one side or the other, it doesn't matter, it's just, it's people from real life, it's people who look like people from real life, killing someone else who looks like people you'd seen in the street, or you'd seen every day of their life. So it's, it's, it's not taken from the high level we'd seen, because a lot of stuff about Ireland is always about the protesters, or the people who are in a passion of you on the world, they're trying to tell you this is this, this idealistic viewpoint I've got is the thing that will save you and solve all the problems. And these films always come across as smug as hell and simplistic and they don't really you don't really feel you're actually done anything proper with those films. You always feel like you're being told down to by someone who's not that bright. because uh, it just feels like it's someone with an idealistic view aren't self-critical enough, you know, that's what a lot of like idealistic views of any political message, you know, could be in America, could be in Iran, it could be in Africa, 
a lot of time you see someone do a political film, a lot of time you feel like it's simplistic, even if they're protesting something that's indefensible, a lot of time you feel like there's some, that their analysis is like what is very simplistic and you can be horrified by what the, the people that are criticising are, but you're still, a lot of, some, there's always something in the back of your mind saying, yeah, but I'm sure there's other elements they've cut out that are very important, you know, like how do we get this to this state and all that stuff. So you so I always find that political films tend to not really get behind what the problem is. They always just seem to be, in some ways, an exploitation of the problem if they're bringing up something that's important to know about. This film is just like, we're not doing anything. You're just watching people do something, that's it. You're just seeing a situation and this is insane. This isn't purely insane. It's an insanity. You cannot be behind this. These people have gone so far they just want to kill other people for a different viewpoint in life from them. And, and the thing about Catholicism and being a Protestant is it's still part of Christianity. It's, it's still part of the same religion. It's just two separate views on it. Uh, I mean, a lot of religions like Islam have two different uh, split offs of two different points of view as well. There's a lot of religions who have that feeling of that there's like some of both sides think they've got the best version of the religion and the other person's sacrilege to what they view of, you know, they view as the perfect way to express it. You know, this is the, the Christian version, the Catholic versus Protestants. And yeah, because where, where I live basically you have the Catholic versus Protestants when, when I was younger. Because it's the west coast of Scotland, you, you get, you still got Catholic schools and Protestant schools, but it's not as important anymore. They always felt a bit stupid, that thing. Uh, and it was always this two cultures, but now they're kind of much more mixed now. It's, it's not as important, but then it was, then it was like, it defined you where we were Catholic or Protestant, and this hatred just built and built and built, and, it's, and Ireland was like the melting pot of all the dysfunction. So, this film is about the far end of that, of the, where does it lead? It just leads to people killing each other over nothing, over bits of land that look ugly. And over an ideology that I know we've spoken about, it's just shoot them, shoot them, shoot them. That's all they can do is shoot them. No one expresses any beliefs, no one expresses anything. It's just shooting them at this point. Everything else has been drained. And and, and, and genius is it's going through normal lives. It's it's not going through like the political side. It's just a, it's just normal people shooting each other. People you'd never expect to have a gun or know how to use a gun are now shooting each other. And it becomes horrific. And it becomes deadening. And the, 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 the only conclusion is at the end of it is this is a horrific situation. You have to try and find a way to stop it. You know, that's the only conclusion. You have to find a way to love each other. Even if you don't agree with each other, you have to find a way to love each other rather than shoot each other. I mean, this is the extreme end of punch Nazis, you know. It's not just punch Nazis, it's shoot them. And that's just off, that's just wrong. There's something weird about that attitude. This film really expresses that, just visually. It's all about visually. It's always these moving city cam shots and following people. And because it was... Um, it was shot in 4 to 3 ratio because it was for the TV at that time. It gives it a spare quality that 4 to 3 has if the very director has it. it there's just no expression of anything but the subject. Because Alan Clark at that point it was cutting stuff down, cutting stuff down to the essence. And this film was the essence of this problem. Uh, it was a controversial film. A lot of people hated it. But it's wonderful and it's it stayed relevant. I mean, Gus Van Sant did a film called Elephant about the Columbine Massacre, which was, or based on something like the Columbine Massacre, which was influenced by this. You had the same technique, just the whole idea of some some things are beyond the explanation, but they're still horrific, and you use cinema to express the underlying tensions and underlying emotion behind it. It's not the ideology, it's, it's what's going on itself. So using what the limitations of them are as a strength by cutting down out away and expressing what's going on in a very brutal, very precise way. And that becomes artistic by 
you've shown you couldn't have got away from it. It's just like this is the problem, this is the situation, and we're not going to moralise to you. You deal with it. It's your problem now. And that's wonderful. It's a wonderful film, you know. Uh, um, in some ways, I think it's Alan Clark's best film because uh, even though there's some terrific stuff out there, this one, well, it's definitely one I like most. <laughs> Because I think it's just so spare and so wonderfully done. The Firm is, is the next one. Um, I've seen both versions of The Firm. There's a the released version and the director's cut. The director's cut is a few minutes longer. And it's and the sequences put back in are in, uh, using like... The quality of the footage isn't as good as the quality of the rest of the film. But you get the, the scenes so you actually see what's going on more. And there's a bit more violence, but there's also some scenes that are a bit more disturbing um, where you get to the psychology of the characters a bit more. So if you have a chance, I'd see do the director's cut. It's it's, it's only about three minutes longer. It's, there's not that much different. It's just um, certain sequences are expanded upon. These, and they're expanded upon to show you the psychology of the characters and the disturbing psychology of the characters. It's not for gratuitous reasons. It's, it's not to show tons of blood. You're seeing a bit more blood to show the depths of the psychopathology of the characters. And again, like it's a bit football hooligans, and like um, Elephant, it's not there to judge anything, it's there to just say this is the problem, you have to now figure out what you feel about it. Because the Gary Owen plays uh, Bexy, who's this thug who goes to um, matches mainly to actually, he's not as interested in football, he's interested in the fights afterwards. He needs the buzz of the fights, he's he's a normal life, he's a real estate guy, he sells houses all the time, he's making lots of money, He's he should have a happy life but real life doesn't do anything for him, he needs the buzz of the fights. Because it's, the real life's tedious to him, the Thatcherite revolution where it's all about money, has left him, you know, rich, but or well off at least, but it's not the full life for him. And the things that he likes are the things that society says you have to repress because it's not good for anybody. And he just isn't very good at dealing with that. But because he's intelligent, because... Just because he knows how to deal with things in a sly way, he can get round to lots of problems, but he's not super smart either. He's still an idiot in lots of ways. It's just that he's emotionally silly and he can't quite get beyond his problems. So it's a fascinating look at what's driving the football hooligans because a lot of hooligans weren't like unemployed people. Some were taking aggression out of each other because the way they'd been left behind. But there's other ones who were professionals who were part of the Thatcherite revolution who still needed the buzz of the fights and the films about those guys and how, what's driving them without telling you what's driving them you have to interpret a lot because they're showing you them in action they're showing them at home and interacting with each other some think others are weaklings some think others are pathetic they argue within each other then they argue with each other what other supports from other, other football clubs so they're fighting, fighting them the, the arguments are within, within the clubs themselves and the fight clubs so they're they're using each other to, to enable themselves and at home they're I mean Gary Oldman is married with a son the the need for violence starts to um, starts to come from the streets into his house when his son gets injured because he he puts a razor in his mouth because Oldman had a razor from a fight that he hadn't put away and there's another scene with him and his wife it's from the director's cut where you think that Oldman's raping his wife and he turns out that she's into it and it's part of their game, sex play game which is really disturbing because it shows she's implicated a lot more than she'd ever like to admit and so it shows the support for all this and you see him go back home to his dad after his wife throws him out and his dad's kind of into this as well but in a different way more old fashioned where he doesn't like the clubs and things he just likes the fists 
and it's this culture that's brought up and that's enabled instincts that may have been pushed down but because of these each, a lot of people enable each other to go further and do this and think that's a good idea, let's do this, let's explore this it creates problems but the problems are already there in society, I mean this is just an expression of the problems so the film's very good, it doesn't it, it's, it doesn't simplify anything this is a problem of society, it's not a problem, it's a problem of these individuals but it's not an easily solved problem and by the end they're, they're going to go out and go to Europe to have fights in Europe as well because, because they're the firm from Britain so all the firms end up joining up I mean the whole plot is about the different firms fighting each other to try and see who's going to be the top firm when they go abroad and some of them take it way too far well, actually all of them take it way too far it's like the pathology is just going insane at some point I mean when Oden's character is the sane one of the three and he's nuts that shows how bad it is and it shows how wayward they've gotten but it's about tribalism and the needs for violence and the how do you have your the violent genetic urges are there in your your soul from the hunter days basically it's still genetically in the human beings how do you use that within society now which doesn't have any need for it and the film doesn't give any answers the film just doesn't say, doesn't judge anything, just say this is the problem you know and it also gets into the idea of people self-justifying like people will leave and then they come back like it's implicated that old has been in jail before and they can't really escape this thing and people who leave because they're, they're angry about how things went down end up coming back at the end to go into Europe to do more fighting and it's, it's like this thing is that there's a sickness there that people just cannot get beyond and it's a wonderful film, it's a beautiful film it's a beautiful film about ugliness which is a weird thing because it's so well done, it's so well written, it's so well directed and acted it's, it's beautiful in a way of how stripped down and basic about the problems are it's a, it's a beautifully made film about ugliness <laughs> and not in a pretty way, it's a, it's, it doesn't try and pray up the images, it's about this ugly instinct that we still have in humanity that we're not really comfortable talking about and that's what the film's about, that's the ugliness that film expresses without glorifying it I mean the problem I have with something like Clockwork Orange is I think it's a film that does actually glorify the violence a little bit I don't think it's dangerous in any way, I don't think it influences people, I think it just the, the, I think it goes over a line a little bit that this film doesn't I think it's trying to express the feelings of the lead characters but in a way that's not quite as distant, artistically as distant as uh, this film is I think this, this makes this film far superior to Clockwork Orange because it's much more clear about the ugliness of man and how it affects people and how it affects society in a way that Clockwork Orange feels kind of comic booky in comparison Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. So I've got, I've got two more films of Alan Clark, so about one episode thing. Hopefully next week, maybe the week after. But that's my uh, Alan Clark look at the Elephant and the Firm. I haven't talked about certain bits with either film. I try not to get any specifics so you can experience when you watch them. I'm trying to be as general as possible. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll speak to you soon.